Hi folks, my name is Joe and welcome to my channel, Your Local Farmer. I've had a few requests for a video demonstrating how to properly set up a three-point mounted moldboard plow. Uh, and a few weeks ago, I was able to spend some time doing just that. Um, please watch the video, tell me what you think. Uh, also linked in the description down below, you'll find a uh, link to a blog post I wrote having to do with uh, three-point draft control, which is very important if you're going to do any plowing. Um, thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy the video. All right, so what we have here is a Ford 4630 four-wheel drive tractor and a Ford three-bottom plow. I want to take a, a moment just to mention to all of you watching this video, um, several people had asked me about making a video about uh, you know setting up a Ford plow. And I have to kind of stop everybody right there. The setup procedure is going to be identical regardless of manufacturer. It doesn't matter if it's a John Deere, a Ford, an Oliver, an International, uh, or a Cavernland. It doesn't matter. Uh, if it's a moldboard plow, you're going to set it up the exact same regardless of manufacturer. So the first thing we need from this plow is a little bit of information. Okay, and we're not talking about model. We're not talking about, um, you know, part numbers, you know, serial number, nothing like that. We just need some distances, okay? The first thing we need to know is how many bottoms. Obviously, we've already counted that. We already referred to it as a three bottom plow. I think you guys can probably count, <laughs> maybe. The next thing we need to know is the distance from one bottom to the next. And we need to know that distance as the tractor's going through the field. So exactly from that shank to that shank, okay? The mistake I've heard of people making is they will measure the, the length of the uh, plowshare and give a distance. Well, the problem is that's the angle, okay? We're talking about the cut width this way, not the length of the share that way. Okay, so the easiest way I find to do it is if you look over here on the plow, at least on these, and it's very common to find this, is that there is a beam that runs fore and aft on each one of these shanks. So I'm just gonna put my tape measure against the inside of that beam, measure over to that beam. Okay, let's do that right now. So here we go, we're against the beam on the second shank. I'm gonna look down here. Now I'm just going to the right side of the first beam and you can see that's 16 inches. So what we're gonna refer to this plow as, as a 316 plow or 316 inch bottoms, okay? And that's where we go back over to our uh, pen and paper, and we're gonna do a little mathematics now. All right, so the next thing we're gonna look into on this plow is we're gonna find our center of draft or our center line of draft, okay? Now, for those of you who've been farming with tractors, you, you may have even heard of this. Uh, I was have been aware of it for many years, but uh, the reality is it actually comes from the 1800s. It comes from the, the days when they farmed with horses. Uh, what they found is that uh, uh, they could alter, adjust, um, you know, exactly which, uh, you know, what the angle was uh, that the horses were pulling the plow through the ground and that there was an optimum point. And when they hit that optimum point, all of a sudden, the horses were at their least resistance. No matter the soil, no matter the soil structure or the type of soil, or whatever, the horses had the easiest job, okay? So let's look first over at this single bottom. Now, if you look, I kind of drew this as though you're looking straight down on a plow. My apologies, I'm not a, an artist, okay? But what we're looking at right here, okay, or a single bottom of a plow, here, of course, is your land side. This is gonna run alongside this, you know, the, the inside of your furrow. I think all of you even know that. Over here, let's see if I can draw this while looking through my phone, is the width of cut, okay? So let's call that 12 inches. Let's say that we're, you know, that's a, 
you know, that's a horse-drawn plow that's 12 inches wide, okay? What they found was that if you put the point in the middle, right there at six inches, that wasn't the easiest place. The place was four inches further to the left, okay? So if that's six inches, your center line of draft is actually gonna be at about two inches from that left side, okay? Or 10 inches from that right side. So if you ever look, if you ever happen to see a horse-drawn plow, that big tongue that goes up over the top is gonna come right down through here. Well, sorry, I didn't get in the frame. Right down through here, right about like that. And then of course, curl back and, you know, curl underneath and go back to the, the frog where it attaches to the uh, moldboard, okay? So that's gonna be about two inches off of center, okay? Well, we can take that same formula and come over here to our plow, our, our 316 plow. This is the one we're, we just looked at, okay? If you multiply, of course, <laughs> really quick here, guys, 16 times three equals 48 inches, okay? So we've got a total of 48 inches of cut every time we run through the field, okay? So where is that center line of draft or center of draft? Well, it's not at 24 inches. That would be right in the center. It's gonna be about 20 inches, okay? It's gonna go right through there. So here's our formula we're looking at is, okay? It's center of cut plus four inches. Okay, and by the way, that's four inches to the left, okay? So, <clears throat> that's where we're gonna find our center of draft. Now, do all moldboard plows run true center of draft? No, they don't. Uh, and in fact, uh, as tractors got bigger and bigger, as tractors started adding more and more bottoms, you know, four bottoms, five bottoms, six bottoms, because wheel track would have to become so immensely large after you get bigger than about three or four bottoms center of draft kind of just goes away it is true and i'll tell you it just there's no two ways about it uh you will have to use more horsepower and burn more fuel that's really all that center of draft is going to gain you is you're going to be able to pull you know the, the biggest biggest plow with the smallest tractor if you have center of draft and you're gonna burn the least amount of fuel, okay? Um, yes, you see, you know, especially over in Europe, yeah, they'll, they'll pull six bottom plows, uh, but they will be terribly out of center of draft, and that's okay. Like I said, as long as you have plenty of excess, excess tractor, uh, you can do that. However, we're looking at doing a setup. Let's take a look. Uh, want to remind you, or at least mention at this point, there are a lot of, uh, there are a lot of plows that have adjustment for center of draft. Uh, there's also a lot of plows that don't have adjustment. So really we're just gonna check. Uh, this is something you should, you know, you'll have to check your plow once. And as long as you never move it, uh, once you've you know set it up once, you're done. But a lot of guys never set it up once. So let's take a look at it real quick, okay? All right, so here we are behind our plow, okay? Now, I suppose there's a way to do this, you know, up at the front and measure right to the the three-point uh, bracket up at the front. I'm just not finding that extremely easy at this point. Uh, for one thing, I can tell you this, this plow is not made to adjust. Here, let me walk up here for a second, I'll show you. It's pretty well a solid manufactured front end. You know, it's, it's built not to move. So what you'll find with, especially uh, as you got into the six, uh, the, excuse me, the 70s and the 80s and the 90s, is they would make a sliding uh, 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 three-point system that would adjust left and right. I've even seen them go go so far as to have a uh, hydraulic cylinder that would do it on the fly. I don't know why, uh, but um, what you'll want to do is, if it has a sliding system left and right, is do the best you can about trying to get it at that center of cut or excuse me center of cut plus four inches to the left okay again is it the end of the world no it is not however if you're having power issues that is going to help because like i said it's going to use the least amount of power 
and at the end of the day, it's gonna use the least amount of fuel. Okay, back to the back end of this, this plow. What I've done is huck, hooked my tape measure on the tip of the third uh, plowshare, okay? Right, all right, let's see if I can find it here. Okay, right there is 20 inches. We come straight up, and that's right up the center line of that backbone. Now, I apologize, my tape measure isn't exactly perfect. Yes, I probably could, you know, pull a chalk line and, you know, do something like that. I'm just not prepared to do that. But, um, you know, just know that that's where you find your center of draft, okay? That's where you're gonna be pulling. Uh, and again, that's where you're going to be using the least amount of fuel, okay? Now, now that we have found the center of draft, we know where that is. Let's go over here to the, the chalkboard again, the dry erase board. We're gonna look at one other thing here. That's my, there you go, now my phone adjusts. So, if we know that we have 48 inches, split in half is 24 minus four, we're gonna have 20 inches on this side, okay? That leaves 28 inches on that side. So here comes the fun part, okay? Now that you have your tractor hooked in the center of draft, where does the tractor tire, where does the tractor tire need to be? Tractor tire needs to be 28 inches approximately. And by the way, you may wanna go, because of course the tractor will always tilt when it's in the furrow, you may wanna even go a little further. So we're looking probably for 29 or 30 inches from the center of the tractor to the inside of the tire. Okay, now, <laughs> let me just give you a bit of a, of a uh, uh, disclaimer. I am not prepared to change tractor tire settings right now. Now, I ran this tractor yesterday. I ran this plow yesterday. In fact, I think we're pretty darn close. But let's find out. Let's grab our tape measure. Let me pull out a little more tape. So I'm gonna go over here. I'm just gonna stick it on top of the, stick it on top, I'm sorry, you guys. Stick it on top of the three-point hitch right there. Okay. Oh, look at that. I'm at like 31 inches. That's just a little, I don't know that it's excessively far, but I'll tell you what, yesterday it sure ran just about perfect. So um, that came just about perfect the way we have this tractor set up. By the way, uh, guys, uh, our farm here, we are a direct market vegetable farm. So all of our tractors are set on an 80 inch center to center wheel spacing. That's why every tractor we get, we, we set it up once and we never move it. So I just have to say I am blessed that I don't have to adjust this. Boy, that came out perfect, I tell you. Okay guys, off to the next thing. Okay, guys, I just want to say something real quick here. Um, I cannot emphasize enough the importance of finding your wheel spacing. Now, even if you cannot run proper wheel spacing at center of draft, that's okay. Like I said, if you have enough tractor, tractor horsepower, I should say, and if you have enough fuel, <laughs> uh, there's no problem. If you don't run on center of draft, uh, it shouldn't be the end of the world, okay? The problem is from your towed center point, it is imperative that you find the distance to the inside of that furrow that you're gonna be running down. I can't tell you how many people will, uh, that I've heard of, heard of, I should say, uh, hook up to a plow, uh, you know, any tractor, any plow, and then say it plowed terribly. It was horrible. Well, did you make any adjustments? Well, not really. You know, I, I adjusted the plow. Well, the problem is, as soon you know, the problem with moldboard plowing is the tractor has to be set up to the plow and the plow has to be set up to the tractor. That's really what it comes down to. Unfortunately, you can't just drop a, a, drop a plow, pick it up with any random tractor and expect it to do a good job. You really need to make sure that it's set correctly and that I don't want to say that you can never pull that plow with another tractor. That's not it. It's just that you may, it may be an entire day of moving tires. All right. So before we head to the field, 
I want to share one last little tip for you guys. This here is a phrase that we use in our, our family, or at least on our farm, to remind us how we set up a moldboard plow. Now, pretty simple, don't plow less weight, but what does that mean? Well, I'll give you a hint. Doesn't mean anything. Don't plow less weight is just simply how we remember our order on how we're gonna set up this plow. Number one, we're gonna set our depth, okay? Number two, we're gonna set our pitch, okay? Number three, we're gonna set our level. And number four, we're gonna set our width. Okay, one, two, three, four. Depth, pitch, level, width. Don't plow less weight. And you'll see how that comes in as we start uh, setting this plow up in the field, okay? Now, once we set number one, we may have to come back and try it again. Now, we're not gonna get caught up with every time we make an adjustment, you know, uh, that we're gonna, oh, first thing we have to check is depth and we're gonna get our tape measure up. We're, we're just gonna make some let's just say some rough adjustments, but if you work in this order, you should always be working towards making a better plowing experience. What we find is that a lot of people will start jumping around on these. They'll adjust, they'll adjust width and then they'll do depth. And then, and the problem is that every time you make one adjustment, it changes something else. So it's very important. Start with depth. Yes, you may have to come back and, and adjust it again, then adjust pitch. Yes, you may have to come in and adjust it again, then level, then width. And I'll show you how to do all four of those. All right, folks, so here we are in the field. You can see behind me here, I've laid out a couple of back furrows. And uh, now I hate to say there's not a whole lot of setup you really can do on a plow until you get your back furrows done. Uh, all of the setup pretty much has to be done in a furrow okay so when you go to lay out your back furrows really all you're going to do is you're going to plow once down plow once back uh and remember on your on your return trip you're going to plow over the top of your previous pass in fact you're you know if you cut 40 well this is a you know 48 inch plow i think we covered that 40 inch, inches wide you're gonna put your tire dang near down the center of that plow path on your return trip. Uh, so that you can, you know, you won't, really what you're gonna do is you're gonna roll the, the, the soil over one direction, roll it back the other direction as you come the other direction. Um, but uh, you're hoping to just incorporate it good. By the way, one last thing. Yes, I realize this is a disked field. It looks a little silly plowing in a disked field. But the reality is I'm just looking for a place to show you guys how to set up the plow. Okay, so I'm gonna fire up the tractor. I'm gonna get in the furrow here. I've made a handful of adjustments. I'm really just gonna go by, by guess, if you will. Just kind of, you know, take a look at the angles. Here, let me get so I can show you over my shoulder here. I'm really just taking a, a wild guess as to how much angle should be on the plow, how much, uh, you know, how how long the, the top link should be. Now, top link is gonna adjust, you know, the, the forward back uh, pitch on the plow. And so uh, really, I'm just gonna kind of take a couple of stabs at it and, um, you know, go with the best, my best guess. Now, I'm gonna stop the video here. I'm gonna run my GoPro and show you, you know, show me plowing. What I won't be able to show you is adjusting the depth control lever. That's really the, the first thing I'm gonna do is my depth control lever on the control quadrant. And I'm really just looking for um, how much, let me see down here, how much I'm filling this back moldboard. I really wanna be able to just see the tip of that back moldboard, um, you know, as best I can. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down the, the, the uh, go down the furrow, oh gosh, 60, 80, maybe 100 feet, and push in the clutch, stop mid, you know, mid plow, if you will. And uh, we'll come back to the back end of the plow and we'll start looking at how things are looking, okay? <laughs>
All right, so the other thing I'm going to do to check my depth is I showed you that I was checking where the trash board started here. I'm then going to look at my second bottom, and I'm about the same level. And then if I look in here, let me just look right over the top of this beam. If I can block the light a little bit. Oh, it's it's kind of, don't ask me, there's a little, there's some odd coulters on this plow. But we're a little shallower on our front uh, mole board than we are on our rear. You'll have to just kind of take my word for it. Um, let me see how we can adjust this here so that we're deeper on our, you know, deeper on our front mole board. Now, we've roughly set depth, okay? That was our first step of the don't plow less weight formula, okay? We've set depth. Now, we're not looking for an exact amount. Maybe some people are. I'm not looking for an exact amount. I'm looking for a rough working depth, okay? The next is going to be pitch. Is it pitched, excuse me here, is it pitched nose down or is it pitched nose up? Now, what I'm going to do, the easy way to do this is I'm going to measure. Uh, I don't have, well, unfortunately, I left my tape measure at the shop. But I do happen to have a long field flag. So let's use this. We can use it just as a rough measuring device. And let's see here how tall we are from our back bottom. I'm going to call it right about... Right about there that we're at the bottom of our frame let's go up here to our front mold board I'm a little high in the front which makes sense because I wasn't filling the front mold board quite as much as I was the back okay so let's take a, another look here I'm going to shorten this top link up a couple of turns, and we'll see how she looks, okay? There's one. It's hard to do one-handed. Ah, there's two. Okay, let's try this again. So we've now adjusted our depth. Again, that's just kind of a rough working estimate. We've adjusted our pitch. Um, I don't know that we're perfectly level, but I'm pretty happy with it. it you know, from, uh, from if you step back a ways, it doesn't look like it's riding nose down or nose up. Um, this is nothing that has to be scientifically perfect, but it helps, okay? We've done those two, depth, pitch. The next is going to be level, okay? Now I can tell if we step back here at a distance, I'm going to step down in the furrow. Let's just look. Yeah, I don't like the level, okay? Obviously the tractor sits at an angle. It always does. It rides in the furrow. But if you look, the mole boards, if I look from the back end, the mole boards are tipped. I'm exaggerating here, but they're tipped over. I want them to ride almost perfectly up and down, and I can tell that that main beam is not riding level, okay? So I'm going to make a couple adjustments to our uh, leveling linkage. That's going to be on the right-hand side of the three-point hitch. I'm going to extend it out probably about, uh, oh, let's, let's see if I can give it about four cranks or four half cranks. That'll be two full cranks and see if that makes an adjustment. We'll make another another look at it here shortly, okay? Okay, ran another couple of feet. 
well, probably 30, you know, 50, 60 feet. Still didn't like the way that the front board, I think it was overfilling a little bit. Let me make another extension. This time I'm just gonna go, oh, how about a crank and a half? Okay, let's call that good. Let's try it again. Okay guys, after making that last pass, we had to turn around at the end of the field. We're coming back the other direction now. I have to tell you, I'm really liking the way this, this plow is set up. We've settled, you know, we've picked a nice depth. We've adjusted our pitch. We've adjusted our level. We had to readjust our pitch. Yes, I realize that. We've got one step left to go and that's gonna be our cut width. Now, you may wonder, you know, first of all, what is cut width? How does it, you know, change anything? Uh, what does it have to do with? Well, first of all, there, there's a couple of things, okay? Let's look, look over my shoulder here. Do you see that dark line running down towards the end of the field there, okay? What that is showing me or what that is from is we are not taking a full cut with our front board, okay? There's a couple of things that are gonna be affected by that, okay? It's not imperative that you have your cut width exact. However, it's sure nice, okay? It's gonna do a couple of things. Number one, you've gotta travel through this field X number of times. If you're taking, let's say four inches too narrow of a cut that's four inches times you know how many passes my god you're you, you know you it can equal you know three or four extra passes through the field not the end of the world but you know come on all of us have to admit there's not enough hours in the day for what we do okay i've got to change hands here hold on okay the other thing is it can create uneven wear on your moldboards, okay? If that front moldboard is not full, it's not gonna wear at the same rate as all of the other moldboards. Not the end of the world, but it's something to consider. But the big thing is, if you're looking for a pretty field, what you're gonna notice is you're gonna have some stripes in your field where, because one moldboard isn't taking a full cut, the others are, you know, come on, we farm pretty around here, you know? I'm sure you guys do too. So let's take a look at how that adjusts, okay? All right, guys. So the nice thing to know about your width adjustment is that it will not make, or usually does not make any difference on all of the other setup. That's why we leave it for last. We're gonna make all these setup adjustments and then our cut width is the very last thing, okay? So in order to make the width adjustment, we're actually going to use this handy little piece right here. It's called a landing bar. Now, I was asking my dad here the other day, you know, does, uh, you know, when you're using the landing bar, does that mean you also have to extend your flaps and turn on your landing lights? Uh, he didn't think it was real funny, by the way. Uh, the one thing I did forget, by the way, is my tape measure. It is handy to carry a tape measure with you. Now, if you look, obviously we talked about that's a 16 inch cut. Look at that though. I don't know that that's 16, but it's probably only about 12. In fact, you can see, okay, let's look here. Just from the furrow, let's draw a line. It should just almost reach the tip of the end of the moldboard. Look at that furrow right there. See how much moldboard is left? So we're definitely cutting too close to the right. Okay, we need to make the plow go left, okay? So the way we're gonna make this adjust, let me step out of the furrow here. Okay, we're going to adjust this plow so that the tail end pushes more to the right. That will make the plow want to come over to the side and plow more to the left. If it's too far to the left and you need to make it go right, you make the tail come to the, to the left and that'll straighten the plow back up to the right, okay? Now, I wanna take this time or this moment to show you guys, we loved this, by the way, when New Holland came out with these beautiful anti-sway bars with all these adjustments in them, those are really nice. But if you look, I don't have the pin in them. The reason I wanted to point that out is that is the way 
many old plows were made to run. This is your adjustment for left or right, okay? Yes, it is nice that the new plows have sway adjustments, sway blocks, all that kind of stuff. Just know that that is the proper way to adjust it. And I guess I'm pointing this out, guys, because I've seen too many folks where their plow is worn out. Okay, and by the way, this left-right adjustment will change as your wear blocks wear or as your land sides wear. And I have a fear that there's an awful lot of guys that keep just moving the, the pin in their sway block. You're going to just put extra pressure on that bar, you know, on those uh, 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 lift arms. And I'm afraid you're just going to end up breaking something because you're now the tractor is what is trying to keep that plow straight instead of the plow itself. Okay. So in order to make this adjust, like I said, back to the left, we want to swing the tail to the right. Here's our landing bar. We want this. Now let me let me pan down so you can see they're angled, okay? And if you take and you take that that bent elbow and push it forward, that's going to push the back end of the plow to the right, brings the plow back to the left, okay? Now, you can go ahead and ask, Joe, how did you know that it was going to plow to the right? That's because I moved the lever so I could show you guys, just so you know. Uh, anyhow, so let's make an adjustment. Oh, look, that's where it used to sit. Let's make an adjustment, guys. Hard to do one-handed, by the way. I may have to turn the camera off. Uh, by the way, I want to point this out real quick. Many older plows do not have this lever with a ratcheting system here what they will have is that this landing bar will simply be bolted in place or you know clamped in place with like u-bolts and you'll have to loosen them up okay good luck getting those loose by the way and then get a pipe wrench on it of some kind and you can bend you know twist it with a pipe wrench uh just loosen it up Maybe make a mark on it where it originally was and try to turn it just, you know, 10 degrees, maybe 15. Uh, it'll take a little bit of play, you know, playing with it. But once you get it set, it should run until the plow starts to wear out again. Okay. Let me shut this camera off. I'll get an adjustment. Get it adjusted and we'll, we'll try this again. Okay. All right, guys. One last thing here. I made the adjustment for the uh, landing bar. I'm going to take off now and I want you to watch as that plow, it should move over about four inches or so and start tracking with a good full front board. Okay, take a look.
All right, I'm sure you guys can see I'm now covered in dirt all over. Uh, I've just gotten back from uh, plowing. I went ahead and pulled up next to our shop and pressure washed the plow off. I've got to get it back to our neighbor. By the way, a huge shout out to our neighbor, Richard Ayers, for allowing us to borrow his plow uh, so that we could create this video for you. Uh, by the way, I've created a blog post about three-point draft control, where it came from, you know, uh, what it's about, what it's used for. And uh, if you guys are interested, I'll link it in the description down below. Uh, it's something you guys will definitely want to check out, especially if you're plowing in uneven ground, uneven terrain, uh, and especially if you're using a, a smaller tractor or a tractor where uh, power becomes an issue at times. Um, please check it out down below and let me know what you think. If you guys have any ideas for videos that you'd like me to create uh, about farm machinery, tractors, uh, agricultural technology, uh, the ag economy, you know, the world ag system, uh, please let me know. I really want to use this medium to, to speak to people about agriculture and what farmers are facing nowadays. Thanks a lot and appreciate you guys uh, watching this video.